love Him and all that. And it's Sweetheart Week this weekend's Valentine's, so I'm going to preach about love tonight. Might be like that one preacher. Um, um, he, he preached one Sunday and it was, it was uh, real hard and he preached on sin. And uh, next Sunday he preached on sin. Next Sunday he preached on sin, stuff like that. And this woman come out one time she said, Preacher, she said, um, why don't you preach about love? So you preachers are supposed to preach about love. How come you don't ever preach about love? He said, okay, I'll do that. So the next Sunday morning he got up and he said, some of you people are wondering why I don't ever preach about love, so tonight I'm going to preach about love not the world. And boy, he went on a tirade against the world. Preached against everything. Loving the world. Next Sunday night, Sunday he preached on uh, love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul. And mind, body, and strength. Oh my goodness, it was awful. He preached on everything like that. Next Sunday, uh, he preached on love your brother, love each other, and all that. And uh, that Sunday, that woman stopped the door and she said, That's enough, preacher. You start preaching on sin again. She had all she can stand on love. A lot of these people want to hear a preacher talk about love. They ain't talking about real love. And so tonight, I'm going to try, I don't know if I can do it, except tell you what the Bible says, to talk to you about what love is tonight. We are a messed up generation. When it comes to love, I'll guarantee you that. This world talks more about love to know less about it than any generation that's ever lived. I'll guarantee you what you hear on MTV and on TV is not love. What you see and hear on there is not love. What is love? Somebody says, I love you. That is the most famous words in the world, I reckon. Love only over 400 times in the Bible. But let's look at 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3 tonight. And I'm not going to preach long. I just want to give you a little thought about love. I really honestly don't know if I can tell you what it is or not. I can try uh, from the Bible. Because love is a very hard word to define. Yeah. Somebody said, well, I'm in love. Am I in love? Am I in love? I wonder if I'm in love. I'm like, well, I don't know if you are either. Uh, but uh, I don't, I'm going to tell you what the Bible says about it. I know people it's in and out and in and out and in and out quite often. Uh, but uh, uh, it probably ain't love at all. So what the Bible said in 1 John chapter 3, look at verse 11. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 11. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. This Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's Righteous. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. That's the way you know you're saved. The way you know you're saved is you love all Christians. If you don't, you might have something to worry about. That's what it says. We know we passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not, his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. That is a awful. That is a strong verse. According to that verse, if you hate somebody, you ain't saved. <laughs> I don't believe that. But that's what it says. I'm just messing with you. I'm just messing with you. I'm just messing with you. Whatever it says, bless God, I believe. Amen. It says I believe. So he ain't hate nobody. You say, well, Brother Danny, that puts me in a mess. I, I don't know anybody in the world that I want to die and go to hell. Do you? No. I don't. They ain't a soul. My worst enemy, I hope and pray God blesses them and puts them in heaven when they die. I don't care if I ever see them again. But I, 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 don't, want nothing, I don't want to die and go to hell. Amen? There's some people I'd rather not be around. Uh, but uh, I do, honestly. I love everybody. Look here at verse number 16. Hereby perceive we the love of God. Here it is. Because He laid down His life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso hath this world's good, that means this, if you've got something and see somebody needs help and you won't help them. Verse number 17. Whoso hath this world's good, money, clothes, food, whatever, and sees his brother have need, and shuts up his bowels of compassion, how dwells the love of God in him? How dwells the love of God in him? That verse said, if we, if we have stuff, if I've got a bunch of food in my refrigerator, 
And I see him. He ain't starving. I see him. Man, there ain't nobody in here looks like they're starving. Uh, Jason, he, he's anorexic. But uh, you should have seen him before he got that disease. Uh, but uh, anyway, if I see him have need, and I say, I'm going to hog it off of myself. How dwells the love of... You want me to translate that? If we know our bus workers need to go out and eat Tuesday evening, and I get up here and beg for y'all help them, and we get $134, how does the love of God dwell in you? We got $166 short. How dwelleth the love of God in you? Claim to be Christians. All right, we'll have our ushers, our pianists to come. Now, we'll bow every head and shut every eye. Now, look, well, we got $134. And our bus, they go out and spend their money every week. How dwelleth the love of God in you? You, you say, well, Brother Danny, Mama, listen, some of you can write a check for $166 and never even miss it. Amen. Amen. Yes, How dwelleth the love? Don't tell me love, love your foot, brother. Love, not love in, in word, yeah. but in deed and in truth. Yeah. You love somebody. It's like your husband. You don't want your husband to come and say, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Yeah, right. You don't ever show it. You don't ever do nothing. You don't... Love is proved by our attitude and our words. Ain't that right? Yes, Look at here. Verse 18. My little children. There's that verse I just quoted. Lordy mercy. Let us not love in word. But in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Now, what does that mean? But in tongue, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Show sure you do. Okay, show it by deed and truth. Yeah. Talk's cheap, man. I've heard people say, "I love you, brother Danny." Yeah. Okay. Well, where are, where are you when I need you? Uh, where, listen, brother. Let us not love in word, but in deed and in truth. Verse nineteen. Hereby we know that we are of the truth, and shall assure our hearts before Him. For if our heart condemn us. God is greater than our heart. That means if your conscience is bothering you, think what God must think about you. Uh, and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we come toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him, because we keep His commandments and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. And this is His commandment, that we should believe on the name of the Son, Son Jesus Christ, and love one another as He gave us commandment. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. Talk about that just for a minute. First of all, what is love? What is love? I don't have the foggiest. I, th- I know people think they... Well, I can tell you what the Bible said. People say, what is love? love I've heard it defined these ways. Love is a, a fabric that never fades. No matter how many times it's washed in the waters of adversity and grief. Somebody said, love is like age. You can't hide it. Somebody said, love is the glue that cements friendship. Somebody said, love is sharing a part of yourself with others. Somebody said, love is easily demonst- more easily demonstrated than defined. Somebody said, love that makes you f- something that makes you feel funny and act foolish. I don't know about all that. It might be right. But according to the Bible... According to the Bible, I'm going to tell you what love is. According to the Bible, 1 John 4.10 is the definition of love. The Bible said this, Herein is love. You're looking at it? 1 John chapter 4, verse 10. Herein is love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be propitiation for our sin. Now, I'm going to tell you tonight, listen, uh, uh, MTV does not have love. I mean, uh, VH1 B-E-T, don't have a clue what love is. And I'm saying, I love you, baby. I love you, baby. They don't love. Listen, when they say that, they don't love them. They love what you can do for them. They love their self and they love the way you make them feel. You girlfriends that got boyfriends, he says, he, you say, well, he told me he loved me. You know why he tells you that? He loves how you make him feel. He's in love with himself and he likes how he can feel. That ain't real love. You know what love is? Love is an old hill far away 2,000 years ago with a cross up there with a man who never done nothing wrong, who never said a word out of the line, who never took one step he wasn't supposed to take, who never uttered one word of mouth and laid down his life for a bunch of sinners like me and you to keep us out of hell. That's love. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. That He is love. 
you say, well, Brother Danny, I heard um, uh, Toby Keith, and uh, he sung, and he sung a song about love. Yeah, right. I, I don't want to hear it. Amen. You say, well, Brother Danny, uh, be spares. No, no, she don't. She don't. Lord, she don't know. She didn't get married but 55 hours. And you say, and you say Brother Danny, uh, Janet Jackson, don't even start. Hey man, you know what? We had a bunch of people and they finished watching the Super Bowl. When that bunch of mess started at halftime, I just reached over and turned it off. And so we didn't have to see the nasty old saggy wrinkly up mess. Hey man, looked like a bunch of, a bunch of old chocolate candy that had melted and then somebody left. Hey man, I tell you what, but this has abomination to God and every one of them. Listen, they ought to be banned from TV. Say man right there. Love it. That ain't a million miles from love. God ain't a a million miles from that. Thank God, brother. Love is God loving us. Somebody called me the other day and I said, you got to see this video. Go see it. I said, okay. Said, oh boy. I'm telling you, it's Brittany's got one now called Toxic. So they called me and told me, they said, look at this, preacher. And I looked at it. Lord, I didn't watch for about 30 seconds of it and it's bad enough. I'm telling you something this evening, ladies and gentlemen. That is not love. According to the Bible, love is... Here's what love is. Love is when you desire the very best for the person that that love is going. That's what love is. God looked down and He seen us. We didn't deserve it. We didn't earn it. And He took our best interest at heart. If somebody don't have your best interest at heart, they don't love you. If somebody just loves you because they want to use you for what you can do for them, that ain't love. That's selfishness. But brother, if, if I love you, then I'm going to tell you what's best for you and I'm going to do what's best for you. Amen? That cuts out about 99% of what this world calls love. Amen? It wants the other person's health, happiness, and future, and are willing to do what we can to secure it. In other words, love is exactly opposite from what this world says it is. Amen? Whatever movie star and singer says it is, uh, I, amen? Uh, I love my car, and I love my this, and I love that. You know what that is. That ain't love. Um, you know, he's talking about the movie that Mel Gibson's come out with. Uh, the Passion of Christ or Suffering of Christ, something like that. And it's getting ready to hit the theaters here in a couple of weeks. And uh, from, from what I understand, uh, it must be a pretty good movie because Hollywood's fighting it. And anything they're against got to be good. And anything they're for has got to be bad. You can mark it down. And I'm sure it's probably not exactly scriptural. But I about guarantee you, it really shows a little bit of how the sufferings of the cross sort of went and giving a little bit of glory to God if they wouldn't be doing it so much. And they're saying it's anti-Semitic because the Jews crucified and all that. And they're saying it's against Jewish people and all that. It's just the Bible. It's just the truth. And the Jews did deliver Him. The Romans crucified Him. But the Jews delivered Him. Of course, they don't know that. Uh, they don't pay no attention to stuff like that. I don't get but I'm going to tell you something, brother. That's what love is. That's what love is. Love is God sending His Son. And what is love? Let me say secondly this evening, we'll hurry along. We'll be done. Where does love come from? This is Sweetheart Week. All you husbands need a little love. You say, Lord, tell him, preacher. Tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him. Uh, where does love come from? Love comes from God. It cannot come from the devil. First John chapter 4, look at verse 7. He said this. He said, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Love is of God. Real love comes from God. And if you got something that didn't come from God... It ain't real love. Somebody said, well, I'm, I'm doing some, but I love this. and I don't know what it is, but it didn't come from the Lord. Because real love comes from God. There's a difference. There's a major difference. It cannot come from the devil. I think, you say, well, you believe two lost people can fall in love? Yes, I do. I believe that. I do believe two lost people can fall in love. But their love comes from God. Amen? They can't know it in the fullest. They can't know. I didn't know what real love was until I got saved. Not real love. Not deep love. Not unselfish love. I had no idea. 1 Corinthians 13 is your definition. Read it, brother. Read it. It'll tell you what real, pure love is. In this world, before I got saved, before you got saved, our love is always has a selfish motive. It always has self involved. It always has self at the bottom of it. But God love, if God is love, if there ain't no God, there ain't no love. Amen? Out in the world, it's 
uh, I love you means I want you for what you can do for me. That's what it means. It don't mean I want best what's best for you. Somebody said the loneliest place in the world is the human heart where no love is. That's probably the truth. Number three, let me say this. What will love do for you? What will love do for you? It will cause you to be loyal. It will cause you. You know why, you know why love is the most important thing in the world? You know why He said the greatest of these is love? You know how the Lord said all the commandments are summed up in this? Love the Lord thy God with all your heart. It's always got something to do with love because love is the only thing that will make you be faithful even when people ain't looking. Ain't that? Now, commandment. You know, we used to in school, like I told you this morning, when a teacher come in, we'd straighten up. As soon as he'd walk out the door, man, we'd just raise cane. And t- kids do their parents like that. Husbands and wives do that. When somebody's looking, we walk the chalk. As soon as we get by ourselves, we go the other way. Now, now God don't want us to do what we do for Him just because people are looking at us. I know people do that. I said, well, we're at church now. Straighten up. Well, you ain't pressing nobody. You ain't pressing nobody. You say, well, we're at church now. Be on your best, kids. Listen, we're supposed to serve God because we love Him. I'll never forget when I first got saved. I... I kept my rock music. I kept my long hair. I, my, I wouldn't get a haircut. And when people started preaching on long hair, I got mad. One preacher got up one time and he said, Get that old long hair, cut your old hippies, and stuff like that. Boy, I remember I got mad and I said, And I argue. I want to be arguing about it. I want to say, How long is long? Did you ever do that? Anybody ever use that one inside of me? How long is long? How long do you know it's a sin? Is it this long? Is this long sin? Is this long? I can't tell. I can't tell. I see. And you know what I was doing? I was just saying, and boy, you know what? It wasn't long after that until I got in a good service. I'd been saved about April, May, June, July, somewhere about four months. And I remember one night I was in a good service and I got filled with God's Spirit. I'm telling you, you got so thick in there, you had to get a C&I dog to get out of that place. I mean, people was a crying, a slobbering, slinging snot on the altar, brother. I mean, people were hugging necks. I mean, it was awful. And boy, I remember I got out of there that night and I was full of God. I went, Woo! Good God! Hallelujah! I went out there, I had a little OMG, stuck a tape in a, in a tape player, and it started. Like that, you know? And it seemed like the Lord just went right out the door. And it hit me. All of a sudden it hit me. I thought, that offends God. That offends God. His Spirit don't like that. And then I thought, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I'm sorry. And it wasn't because the preacher said it was wrong. It wasn't because somebody said, that's a sin. That's wrong. Quit that. Brother, when I fell in love with Jesus, I didn't want to hear that stuff no more. And that's the secret of the Christian life. We serve Him because we love Him. We've had my kids in a Christian school all their life. My kids have never went to a public school. Neither one of them. And I highly, strongly recommend it to everybody. If I had it to do over, I'd do it again. And because that public school is poison. And the Christian school is about a third. A lot of them. They take two thirds less than the public school. And I'm going to tell you what, brother. My kids never been to public school in their life. Been to Christian school. But you know what one of the dangers in a Christian school is? They're made to do right. 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 And they have to outwardly uh, go by all the rules. They have to wear their hat. And that's good. I'm all for it. I think. But you know what? A lot of times the kids don't have it down in here. I want my girls to serve the Lord because they love Him. Not because we make rules that they have to. Now, we're going to make rules. If you ain't going to do it because you love Him, we're going to make you do it anyway. But I'd sure rather you do it because you love Him. Because when you get grown, you ain't going to serve Him. Any kid that just serves God because they're made to serve God, as soon as they get grown, going to quit. That's right. As soon as they get out from under our nose, they're gone to the hog pen. And brother, I'm going to tell you what. Listen, listen. Ain't, there ain't, a, ain't a man in here that wants your wife to be faithful to you just because she has to. You don't, put, you don't like that, do you? you say, I hate your guts, but I'll be faithful to you. Well, I really would love to be out there partying, but i got to do right. Well, I mean, you know, that's better than nothing. I'd rather do that than go out and party. But I'm telling you, that ain't what you want, is it? You want to say, I love you, and my love for you is stronger than the pull of that world out there, so I'm going to stay with you because I love you. You want your husband to stay with you because you, he loves you, don't Not just because he has to. 
Somebody told me the other day, they said, well, I hate my husband and everything, but I reckon I'm going to stay married because I... Well, I mean, I admire your dedication and all of that, and if that's all you got, then then good. I mean, yeah. Uh, but listen, brother, it ought to be a whole lot more than that. It ought to be a whole lot more than that. We ought, you, should, you should never say, well, it's Sunday. If I don't go to Sunday school, he'll fuss. You know how he's always getting up there yakking. We only like five and, and I wasn't there. and We only like three and if we'd have been there, he, he'll raise Cain so we better... Listen, now if that's the only way you can go, you ought to go. But you ought to get up and come to Sunday school because it's God's day and God made a place for you to come to Sunday school and God made a Christ for your kids and be there because you love God. Because you love Him. I'm going to tell you something. Every time I ever really repented of my sins, it ain't because somebody fussed at me. It's because I got with God and it broke my heart. And I'm sorry because I hurt Him. It made me feel like dirt. And I quit sinning. Amen? That's why you quit sinning. Because you love Him. Because you love Him. Amen? Amen? Be willing to give it up for Him. If it's just family ties and so forth like that, that's one thing. But you love for Jesus. You know what love does? Let me just say this toward each other. Love don't keep a ledger of sins of others. You don't keep a list. Okay. That's one. That's another. One more, buddy. I ain't fooling you no more. Love don't do that. God don't do that. There's no... You know what the Lord said? Somebody told me, Here's what a man told me one time. Um, he said, well, you know the old saying, uh, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Well, that's about as stupid a doctrine as I've ever heard in my life. That's a world's philosophy and it ain't Bible. Let me give you Bible doctrine. Quote, Jesus Christ. This will come to Him. How often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times. And the Lord said, I say unto you, until seventy times seven. Fool me twice, shame on me. Uh-uh. Fool me 490 times in one day. Shame on the devil. You're forgiven. That's love. Fool me 490 times in one day. Shame on the devil. You're forgiven. Boy, that blows our little religious minds. Religious people can't stand that. They say, no way. I don't see anybody in 490 times. Well, you're just full of bull too, brother. Jesus said 490 times. 70 times 7. We can shout on that. You holy people can't shout on that, but us sinners love it. I love it. I'm a sinner and I love it. Amen. Woo! Glory to God. Time you see him 490 times in one day, you're about tired and go to sleep. And I'm not saying it's alright to sin. Don't get me wrong. I'm not minimizing sin. I'm just saying that's how good God's love is. Amen? Sin's always bad. Let me say this and I'll be through. How do you get love? You know how you get love? Get right with God and He'll fill your heart with love. Like I mentioned about our bus workers. We shouldn't have to beg to get $300. Holy mercy. 166 bucks. Now, we're going to take up another offering tonight. Try to buy these people from supper. They spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars out of their own pocket. Some of them ain't got a car that'll make it halfway on the route. Sure, I mean, of course, you take out the bus, a third of us, but the rest of us ought to help out. Amen? It's like this. I'll give you this illustration and I'm done. There's an old woman one time. She's 78, and I mean, you know, the older I get, 70, don't, it's starting to sound younger. Like old Jack Hiles. Old Jack Hiles is talking to him about the uh, women in the church. And he got up one time and he said, uh, he said, I will, he was, I don't know what the hell he was in. He said, uh, he said, I will kiss any woman in our church under six and over 60. The rest of you, you're off limits. And he said, he said, you know, I'm about to change that. These 60 year olds starting to look pretty good to me. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, a 78-year-old woman, wife, she fell in love. She got her boyfriend, fell in love. And that's the best thing for these old hags to do. <laughs> oh, oh, no, I'm just kidding. That's the best thing for these old women, older, elderly women. Find them a good, find them a good man, fall in love, get married. Amen. The only problem is, all them men die, 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 die. And we got women outnumber senior citizen women outnumber senior citizen men like 10 to 1 or something. Well, you just killed them, so don't gripe. 
I reckon you drove them crazy and they took cyanide or killed, committed suicide or something. But anyway, she fell in love. She fell in love. 78 years old. And she had a, she had a problem. She smoked. Smoked cigarettes. She is addicted. Nicotine is one of the strongest drugs known to man. You, you can quit about any drug either, easier than you can quit nicotine. It's highly addictive. Very addictive. That's why kids don't never start. I'm not trying to judge nobody or come down on you. I'm just saying, you'll be a whole lot smarter, a whole lot richer, smell a lot better, and everything. If you never do, start smoking. And she, and she, uh, she couldn't quit. She went to the doctor. She got on medicine. She tried all that stuff they come out with to, keep, to quit smoking. She'd quit two or three days and go back. She'd quit a month and go back. She'd quit a little while and go back. She couldn't quit. And she got her a feller. And boy, her and him, they'd sit out there on the porch like this. And she was 78, so I don't know how old he was, 98. And they'd like, like this, you know. They'd like that old man and old woman that was sitting out there one time. And then she said, honey, we've been rocking out here for about 50 years. I reckon we better get married. And she said, that's a good idea. Who would have us? You know, like that. So they, they was out there rocking like that, you know. And he said, Charlene, I don't know what he called he said, Charlene, I love you. <laughs> and I will marry you, Charlene. And she said, okay, let's get married. And so, he said, I ain't going to marry you as long as you smoke. And she quit just like In other words, what doctors couldn't do, what say no programs couldn't do, what memorizing Scripture couldn't do, love did. She, you fall in love just right, you quit anything, man. Amen. He said, Lord, he told me if I'd lose weight, we'd make well, that love and help you on a diet, man. Amen. You, you can believe what you can do when you're in love with something or somebody that you can't do normally. And wouldn't that fix us right with the Lord tonight? You no, know, it's hard. Yea, it's impossible to live for the Lord unless you love Him. Right. It's impossible. Amen. But man, when you love Him just right, it just seems like it's just a breeze. It's a joy. It's not a drudgery. It's not a hug. How am I going to live right it's longer? You know, it's it's like, man, this is great. This is wonderful. That's right. Love will help you to do what nothing else can do. There's a power in love, Lord. So, how do you fall in love with the Lord? That's a good question. That's a good question. I reckon you read and you pray and you read and you pray until He just invades your heart and His Spirit falls on you and it washes out the world and you fall in love with Him. My desire as pastor of this church, I want everybody to do right. But I want you to do right because you love the Lord. Not because you're scared somebody come tell me, well, what will the other people say at church if I do this? I want you to do it because you love Jesus. Drive that bus because you love Jesus Christ. And that way a a fight or a discouraging or a flat tire or something like that ain't going to knock you out because you're doing it because you love the Lord. Not because the bus runs good. Not because kids behave. Not because junior church goes smooth. You're doing it for Jesus. And that way you'll stay in there. All right, let's stand by our heads.